sort of bird. That's Barbara Windsor sitting opposite me now. Where did you write that out one? I've no I idea. I can't believe that. Could you remember doing it? No. No. <laughs> that story of my life. How actually. did you get it? Was it all right getting here this morning? Traffic oh, right? yeah. I only live around the corner. Yeah. Hence the no face and all the rest of it. She's just the jeans gorgeous. And, and flat shoes. But I arrived at the stage door because I'm working late. I'm working at Brick Lane this week and it's very late. Mm. Um, and, I, and of course my voice is very husky, like Jim. Yeah. Jim Davidson. The first thing in the morning and I arrived and this, the, the lovely guy, you know, waiting for your autographs out front. Yeah. They said to me, one of them said, oh, hello, Miss Windsor. And I said, hello, darling. He said, well, what's wrong with your voice? I said, well, I've got a bit of a cold and it's early morning. He said, would you like a fisherman's friend? So I said, well, that's the best off I've had in ages. And look, he's given me a packet of fisherman's friend. God bless him, darling. Now, the last time I mentioned Fisherman's Friend yes. on television, the company actually sent me a box. Did they? Look yes, at this. He's given them. Oh, he's sweet. Nice. He's darling, isn't he? That's sweet. They're so lovely, you know, those people. They stand out there with their autograph books. And I have to tell you, to the ladies and gentlemen listening, it's freezing on the BBC corner, isn't it? It is. And I think that's I try wonderful. not to spend too many nights there myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for trade, Barbara. No. Now, no, no. by the way, yeah. did you get your bra back? Where from? Pebble Mill. Oh, yeah. You left it. Now, Barbara, quite honestly, I was going to wear it, but it was too small. No, I know. We were, the last we were, time I saw you, I lost my bra, didn't I? We yeah, were going to right. frame it, yeah. but we thought too many people walked past it looking envious. Yes, it wasn't that wonderful, actually. They're not that big, you see. Everybody <laughs> thinks I've got a 38DD, and I'm only a 36C. <laughs> now, your mum wasn't, didn't want this kind of image for you, did she? Oh, well, no, my mother was one of those East End snobs. I mean, she worked all her life, God bless her, to get us out of the East End. Yeah. And um, I remember when I was about, uh, 12, I I was uh, performing at a, uh, a show for Madame Behenna Juvenile Jollities at Stoke Newton Town Hall, I know, can't name it, <laughs> Madame Behenna Juvenile Jollities, and this, this man came to see the show, a little charity show, and uh, he was called Brian Mickey, he discovered Morecambe and Wise, uh -huh. and he said to Madame Behenna, the little, little fat blonde girl, he said, uh, who sings good, 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 he said, I'd like to meet her mother. So anyway, she introduced her to my mother, and he said, I think she's got something. I didn't have the boobs in those days. He said, I think she's got talent. She, she should go on stage. And my mother said, go on stage. I'll have you know, my Barbara goes to a conference. She's going to be a foreign, lang foreign language telephonist. How she got that, I'll never know in a million years. <laughs> and anyway, to cut a long story short, he, he, he took me off, and I, I auditioned for him and lots of producers, and I got a job. Mm. That's how I got into show business. But mummy... M Mummy hated it, actually. She oh. was forever, God bless her, till the day she died, said, I should never have taken you away from the convent. <laughs> she, yeah, be, uh, one day she came to see me, when my name was up in lights, I was doing a show called Sing a Rude Song, about Mari Lloyd. And I think it upset her, because mm. it isn't a very glamorous business, as you know, mm -hmm. Julie. And she saw what it was like backstage, and I remember her saying, I should never have taken away from the convent. It was my fault. Oh, <laughs> bless her. Now, it's all right when you're, when you know, very young, being given titles like I was a have-a-go girl and you're always yeah. called blonde, bubbly, yeah, but, bouncy. Yeah. Does it begin to aggravate you as you get older, Barbara? Well, the thing is, uh, they, I never get a chance. I'm 56 and I never get a chance to play my age, ever, yeah. ever. Because they continually show the, tele uh, you know, the, the carry-ons on television. They've made videos now, haven't they? Compilations, yeah. made them into television. Um, series which we don't get paid for. No, <laughs> you know. but uh, 
but uh, but at the end of the day, you know, walking around here, as I said, I live around the corner, I've walked along the street, and it's, hello, darling, I get a builder yell out, hello, you're looking great, Windsor, carry on, and, you know, you get into a taxi, oh, often the taxi drivers are great, they say, have that one on me, bar. Yeah, you get a marvellous yeah. rapport from, yeah. from Joe Public, and I think, oh, well, at the end of the day, I'm a jolly lady, yeah, and I yeah. am blonde and bubbly and bosomy, and uh, that's what I'm, I, no, I, it's okay, it's, it's all right. What must aggravate you is what what Jim gets a lot of because your love life has provided a yeah. heck a, a lot yeah. of Yeah, actually tablets. me and Jim are going through it at the moment, yes, aren't we? Yes, you are. Yeah, me at the moment. Yeah, but that, that only happened about 13 years ago when I was married to Ronnie Knight and, you know, he, 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 he got nicked for, mm. <laughs> for murder and arson. It's nice, isn't it? But there he did and because then I became fodder for the popular press. Mm. Uh, so ever since then, they're more interested in my private life. But yeah. I understand that. And by and large, they're pretty good. They, they are. You've got a few that are a bit dodgy, but they're okay to you. But do they aggravate you because your husband, your second husband, yes. was younger than you? Yes. And your boyfriend, and they always seem to want to make this toy boy. Yeah, I mean, I had lots of older, older <laughs> men yeah. friends, but yes, they do, they do. But I, 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 I don't worry about that. No. I, I worry for them and their family. Yeah. It, it upsets them more than it does me. Now, I've met your latest fellow, Scott. Oh, he's, he's, he's terrific. He's, he's gorgeous, such, isn't he? Yeah, he's such a darling. I mean, it, it makes me laugh. He's 31, going on 51. He's more, the young people today are so together, and his darling has been thrown in at, at the deep end, yeah. absolutely. Because from the day I met him, my marriage had broken up, so he was in the papers. He was nothing to do with my marriage broke, break up, it was going for some time. And then I had my hysterectomy, and I came out of the hospital, he was helping me out. And um, they, they, they caught us again, and mm. made the front of the newspapers, and then with Ronnie Knight coming back, yeah. the only man to leave Spain to come over here for the sun, isn't he? And, uh, <laughs> So, he's been in the papers, he's been thrust into the limelight, but he's handling it very well and it's brought us very close together. He's a very together young man, I love him dearly. Do you have any contact with Ronnie Knight now? No, no, I saw him in Spain a, a yeah. couple of months ago, it was amazing, I hadn't seen him for 11 years. And uh, he came and found me, and oh. uh, I, I was hiding somewhere in a villa and he came and found me. And uh, I looked at this man, I didn't know him anymore, it was like a stranger, I thought, how can, how can you spend 22 years with oh. somebody? I care about him deeply and I wish him the best of luck. Uh, Whatever happens, I mean, if he gets off, I'm, I'm going to have aggro because uh, he'll write a book. Then they'll make a film of his life, won't they? Oh. And Samantha Fox will play my part. Oh, no. Which won't make me very happy. <laughs> but it, if he goes away, that'll make me even more unhappy. But he was kind of the reason that you wrote your autobiography. Yes, I did. Yeah. You, you remember that? Yeah, you've got a wonderful memory. I wrote it because he was going to write a book, and then there was going to be an unauthorised biography about me and I thought oh no hold on I'll get in quick and that's why I wrote it uh, I didn't want to do it no. uh, you know but you're forced to and I'm glad I did and actually um, it, a lot of things made sense like I always thought it was my fault my mother and father got a divorce when I was 13 but it wasn't putting it you know pen to paper yeah. I thought no no it was them there was these two grown-ups acting like children and I was a little piggy in the middle I really really I was glad I wrote that book. Have you read it again recently? Um, no, I haven't. But Scott, my boyfriend, he, he's read it a lot of times and he sorted me out. He said, I know what your problem is. He said, you felt re rejected from your dad. And, uh, and it's great because we talk about it. Yeah. Let's have a little sprinkle of stardust, shall we? <laughs> Errol Garner playing Stardust, and that's for my special guest, Barbara I'm a great Wilson. Errol Garner fan. I've got Have you? I love his, uh, his CD, Concert by the Sea. Because I'm, you know, I was a jazz singer at one point when I was 18, so I'm a Ronnie Scott man. So I've been brought up on all that. Do you, do you ever do anything now, like that jazz, singing jazz? Uh, no, I don't actually. I do sing. I, oh, I mean, sure. funny enough, I make my living as a singer. People don't realise that. Yeah. And uh, no, no, I, I, I don't anymore. Well, I can't. You know, I'm a great, fr my, one of my best friends is Annie Ross. Oh. Remember? Lambert yeah. Hendricks and Ross, yeah, love her, love her. Great voice she's got. Mm. So tell me about the Fairfield event. Oh, Croydon. it's just that I'm doing Fairfield Croydon with my music hall show, which is lovely. Do you remember the City of Varieties, you know, Leeds, where you used to, dear old Barney Colohan used to produce those wonderful shows, and uh, was it Leonard Sachs, wasn't it? Yes, yes Leonard Sachs, yeah. Well, it's just like that, you know, people come along, lots of, uh, a lot of them dress up with the feather burrs, and that's only the men. <laughs> uh, they sit there, and, and it's it's like pantomime, they join along, it's, it's sing along. I do my mom. Mari Lloyd spot and uh, and another spot in the second half. It's lovely. I'm going there and Watford. At the moment, I'm at, as I say, I'm at Brick Lane Musical, which is wonderful, wonderful mm. to be there. My last night tonight. And I've got Richmond lined up and Brighton. 
It's, I, I do that when uh, nothing much is happening and mm. they say, do you want to come and do a little concert? And that, that's what I'm doing. Because Mary Lloyd is a kind of heroine of yours. Yeah, yeah. And everybody, uh, you know, people from that, that age, yeah. there's not many of them around these days. They said that, that, you know, I'm very like her. She was little. Little lady, uh, and had a lot of trouble with her love life. Oh, did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you played her for Ned Sheeran, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, lovely, wonderful show. Yeah. When Ned Sheeran and Carol Brahms called "Sing a Rude Song," it was sad actually because when we opened at Greenwich, we did incredible, incredible business, and they said it must come to town. And there wasn't a theatre free to come to town. We didn't come to, to town until about six months later. And by the time we reached the West End, the tide had changed. It was hair. Yeah. It was all those um, the dirty show in town. The, the, completely, they didn't want to see a show like that so we only ran for four months uh, and then a year later it all changed back again but that, that that's yeah. the, that's the west end for you now are you going back into entertaining mr sloan well something? i was meant to i'm i'm meant to and i i, I don't know uh I, I was supposed to start in july uh but it kind of got sidetracked they suddenly said uh, rather than go on tour we want you to go into the west end and uh now that's kind of gone out the window. Oh. We're, we're not we're not sure at this moment. That's why I'm picking up on my music halls. Oh. And then I do my pantomime at Basingstoke. I'm playing fairy, and you're doing pantomime. Oh, I'm doing aren't you? fairy. I've always said you should play fairy. And you're doing Jack and the Beanstalk. That's right. With yeah. mental Miss Sue po Pollard. In aren't Birmingham, you? the history. Yes, <laughs> you're going to survive that se season. I don't know, but you couldn't be working with a nicer lady. <laughs> and you're playing vegetable fairy. I know oh, all about I'm it. Oh, look, you've done all your work. Yeah, yeah great. Now I sort of missed you the other week because you had to dash off when we unveiled a plaque. I know you were so fun. I, yeah, I, I went round to Kenny Williams' flat, God bless him, and to Tromvel the plaque. And I said to you, oh, Julia, I heard you on the radio. You were absolutely wonderful, because I'm a big Radio 2 fan. And you went, hey, what? As if you didn't expect anybody to hear you, didn't you? I said, yes, you were on the radio yesterday. Do you mean went, people are oh, listening yeah. to this? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh. I love it, because I'm a Brian Matthews fan. Yeah. And then I listened to you. That was wonderful, and I felt very honoured that they asked myself in normal wisdom to unveil the plaque. Well, you were Kenny's best friend, weren't you? Yeah, really? I just love him. It was, he's a, it was funny. You know, I, I talk, I do a questions and answers after the show, you see. And uh, I always remember, yeah, I read something in the newspaper. He said, um, they, they asked him, they said, you, women don't play an important part in your life apart from your mother. And he said, no. He said, I only like Maggie Smith and Gordon Jackson's wife, Rona, Rona Anderson, and I like Barbara Windsor. And they said, out of any of those ladies, who would you, who could you live with? He said, oh, Barbara Windsor. He said, because she always smells nice. She always smells of Shalimar, and uh, she cleans her teeth after lunch. <laughs> you see? So I thought, how oh, sweet. So I filmed you, Mark. I said, Kenny, that's such, such a sweet thing to say about me. He said, oh, darling, don't get your, your hopes up, he said, because there'd be no sex. <laughs> I mean, he, he was wonderful. I love him. I, I miss him very much, that darling man. He directed you in Entertaining Mr. Oh, yes, Sloan. but that was 12 years ago. It was disastrous. Was it? Was I couldn't believe this actor was so mean to us other actors. He gave us such a bad time. In yeah. fact, we didn't speak for, for quite a while. Oh, really? But this, this Sloan I did was terrific. We toured last year with the wonderful John Shannis and, and Ken Waller who's from Bread and John is from Fools and Horses. Mm. And uh, I'm up for an award. I, well, Joe yeah. Orton wanted you for that Yeah, part, always. You always say, Bar, you must play it when you're, you're, you're the right age. Sorry, what's the award? Then? Uh, for um, the, the Management's Association for the Best Actress uh, on, in a touring production. And the production itself is up for, for an award for the best production on tour. So, you know, if we don't do it again, it'll be sad. Yeah. I have to say, Judy, a lot of theatres don't like the play. They yeah. won't take. It's got nothing to do with oh, us. It's wonderful. They, they, I love it. Yeah. But a lot of, lot of, uh, as I say, theatre managers yeah. don't like it. So there you go. Any regrets, Barbara? I know one of them no. is probably probably that you didn't go to Hollywood. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true because when it was the right time, wrong time, yeah. wrong time, right time. Now I'd settle for. Um, a little scene opposite Jack Lemon because, and I hear he's here at the moment, and I'd love to meet I him. I met him the other week. Oh, you did, grumpy old oh, man, jammy so and so. Did Wonderful. you really? Uh, what a nice man! Oh. Do you know if ever I, I had a dinner party, he'd be my main guest because he plays piano, he plays jazz. Yeah. And they say such a sweet, sweet man. He's and he's so talented, isn't yeah. he? But I don't have any regrets. I treat them as lessons in life. Oh, that's yeah, nice. So you well, have to, don't it's you? been great talking to you. And you, darling. I, I love your program. Thank and, you. And uh, good luck with it. Thank you. And good luck it's with nice the music hall. Don't put a face on. No, it. I know. Oh, I don't have to do Looking like a pile of rubbish. Yeah, shine. do come that's and see us, Lady Jane, because you have a good time. All right. Well, we're going to yeah. play you out with um, Beryl Reed, who, of course, was oh, entertaining. Was, yeah, absolutely. Love, love that lady. I, my love to Beryl. I hope you will, darling. Here she is with Don't Dilly Dally. Oh. <laughs>